Hey everyone, welcome back to the Fun Indian Guy podcast. This is going to be our third satellite version of the podcast where I'm sitting in Dapoli in India in my hometown and I'm talking to people from all around the world. Till now we have covered mostly the Indian part of the world. So also in today's episode we are going to have a friend, a fellow designer, a graphic designer, Rushali Somaman. She is sitting in Mumbai right now and we are having a communication and making this podcast for you guys. So it's super interesting. I'm really happy that because of the lockdown, I'm able to do this kind of podcast where uh, you can really reach out to people in any part of the world and have a nice conversation and document it so that we can share it with you. And it's also helpful for you guys to get some value out of this whole conversation so in today's podcast we are going to talk about especially the world of graphic design uh, because Rushali is a graphic designer so we will talk about how the graphic industry is in India and before that we will also of course talk about her educational path like what she studied and how uh, the education has been because she has studied in India so we will take a look at the Indian design school uh, version or the Indian design school approach towards design and then we will talk about her professional life, what kind of projects she has been doing and what kind of uh, agencies or companies she is working at and then we will take a look at or explore the whole situation of this uh, the pandemic and the COVID-19 uh, stuff and then we will talk about how design agencies or designers have a role to play to bring out company uh, to bring out companies through this pandemic at the same time how the designers can help other brands or agencies to work on uh, having better output when you are coming out of the virus situation because the world is going to look very much different uh, because of also the economic crisis things might not be in place they will be all around the place but designers have a really good task there to align things so we will explore that topic with Rushali. So first thing first, Rushali, thank you so much for joining us on this podcast. It means super a lot. Hi, CEO. Thank you so much for inviting me to your podcast. It's an absolute pleasure to be invited to this. And uh, as I've seen before that you've interviewed some people uh, like Venu Gopal, who was an urban planner and also a policy maker. And uh, also Neha, who is running her own sustainable fashion design firm. So I think in comparison to these uh, really really uh, high achievers i am someone who is pretty much on the nascent stage of her career and uh, what i really want to do through this podcast is maybe give your viewers a little bit of insight on what it's like to really navigate the indian design scene you know uh, as someone who is just starting out what are the ups and downs what are the things which are exciting what are the things that are mundane you know just to give you a little bit of an o of an overview of my experience through the industry in the short time that I've been here. So I know Vrushali for last like five or six years I met her while giving the exams for the entrance uh, of design schools in India and I met her through some mutual friends and since then I know her and we are in touch because of the social media and Instagram and all those things. So I, I've been seeing some of her illustrations and all those things on Instagram but this is like the first time we are into the conversation especially about design and what kind of work she has been doing so it's very interesting for me as well to uh, know more so I'm very like really looking forward to this conversation. Yeah I think uh, so you definitely uh, I think when we talk about graphic design I think the first thing that people think about is image making like you said you know these really nice illustrations and uh, you know the graphic part is something that really attracts people towards it but uh, I would say that's kind of like a misconception I mean I think graphic design is so much more than that and I think definitely things like uh, image making illustration are beautiful parts of it these are things that really are super creative and super fun to do but I think there are so many other things which are uh, a part of graphic design which uh, are not really that visible to the public. So yeah definitely because I, I think graphic design in itself is a very massive and huge field and everybody is like picking some part of it and going deep or vertical in that domain so I think in today's episode we'll also kind of explore that and even I'll get to know more because graphic design hasn't been uh, like I have not studied graphic design and I don't know much about it. I, I just know the communication and strategy part of it. But definitely it will be very wonderful to know more about it from you. So let's let's roll the intro and get into the conversation and explore the field of graphic design 
uh, with Rushali. So let's go. Hey people, I'm Suyog, also known as the Fun Indian Guy. I'm a service designer, musician, and a filmmaker. I really love to talk about design or creativity with super duper amazing people, and that's why we produce this podcast so that we can share this fun together. So basically, Vrishali also studied engineering, as she said in the introduction, and uh, similar to what I did or what other friends of mine did, like doing engineering and then switching to design because we had this creative calling or a bit like creativity stuff, which I personally couldn't explore much in engineering, and that's why I picked design. So I would like to know what was your take on it, like what, how was your this whole transition from engineering to design and getting into the design school because you briefly talked about why you went for design but we would like to know how you went, like how, you, how did you manage to go there and what kind of options did you have in, in, in front of you when you were deciding to go for a masters. Right, uh, so Suyog, so uh, as I, I spoke about it before, uh, I was always a creative person and uh, I got into engineering not really knowing what I wanted to do. It was something that was just, I think now it's almost become like a rite of passage before you do anything creative in life. But uh, I think <laughs> what ha what really happened was that it was something that uh, I sort of got into. I did my four years of engineering. I did not enjoy them a lot, but I made some really good friends, friends who also did not really want to do engineering and wanted to pre pursue many other different creative fields. So I think we all were sort of looking around and I also had another friend, who, uh, Shrishti, who you also know, who was also interested in doing, uh, you know, something similar to design. Honestly, at that point, we didn't even know what was design or if there was any field which was viable like this because uh, we didn't have anybody from our family who was really working in this field and we didn't really have any friends either who were, you know, doing something like this. So honestly, it was uh, uh, very much uh, later in probably my fourth year that I decided that, listen, I don't want to do MBA, I don't want to work as a as an engineer. So I really wanted to figure out, figure out what I really wanted to do. So I decided that uh, I will give, th give these entrances like NID and, uh, you know, SEED. Uh, I also gave the entrance for Shrishti and then there, were, there are obviously all these other entrances like MIT and uh, you have Pearl, you have DJ Academy. So uh, there are all these various entrance level exams that you have, which I actually researched a little bit in my, in my last year like my last year of engineering and I understood that okay these are the exams that I really need to give in order to get into a design school and if this is something that I really want to pursue seriously then I definitely need a design education to understand and really streamline my thought process and uh, get into a zone where I can be employed as a graphic designer. So. Um, so basically after that, uh, as you know, we both joined classes and uh, we all prepared for these entrances and uh, I got through Shrishti and I was there for two years and I learned a lot at Shrishti as a graphic designer. We learned about so many different things. We learned about form, color, typography, visual semiotics, whether it's, it's about creating narratives, storytelling. There, were just, uh, there was just this world of uh, graphic design that I was really introduced to something that I really enjoyed. I think finally I was around the kind of people that I really wanted to be around and uh, I felt like I was really doing something that I was good at, something that I understood, you know. So after that uh, at Shrishti I was there for two years and I had a really good time. I did some, I absolutely worked really hard and uh, even my final year project, uh, it was a long project that we did with uh, uh, this community that fights uh, sexual harassment and I was actually doing a lot of things that I really cared about so all in all it was a great experience and uh, by the end of uh, my college uh, I obviously had to get a job I really wanted uh, to get a job somewhere that I really would enjoy working and uh, figuring that out took a while so I, I think I was clear about the fact that I really wanted to join maybe a smaller firm uh, maybe a more boutique firm who does more specialized work because I really since this is like the first stepping stone uh, for a young designer going from college to the real industry I think you need uh, uh, you know places where you can be given more attention where you have more personal connect with everyone who is working around you so I really wanted to work with 
a boutique studio who was doing a lot of specialized work there were less people and i decided to work with one a great studio and uh, we were doing a lot of work in the art field we did exhibition design we did publications we did a lot of map making a really really you know making really interesting products for people to explore their own cities so uh, there was a lot of uh, interesting work that i did over there and uh, i was there for almost one and a half year and uh, after that i decided that i really wanted to get experience working at probably a bigger agency and you know a, a place where there were many more people and it was just like more more about getting these diverse experiences so i shifted on to a bigger agency and where i'm working now and uh, i'm working with uh, a, an international retail and brand consultancy right now so the kind of projects that we undertake over here are of a much bigger scale they are obviously uh, the kind of brands also that we work with maybe put in a lot more uh, investment into the things that they do we are working with fmcg companies and the scope of the projects is a lot bigger the teams are a lot bigger and uh, you know the kind of environment that i am in is also different so that's sort of been my journey right from uh, doing engineering to where i am right now and still i'm trying to figure out the industry in my own way it's quite interesting can, can you tell us more a little bit more about because the graphic design is a very huge huge uh, field in itself when you were in in your masters what were a couple of streams or what what kind of uh, domains you really liked in in the whole world of graphic design or what were your favorite uh, types of uh, I don't know what do you call it? it's not projects but like sectors of graphic design. Yeah, I think uh, when I had just uh, entered like graphic design, I wanted to uh, be a really good illustrator. I think this is something that you hear very often from uh, graphic designers because um, I think it's it's uh, it's just a really nice. It's you know the most graphic part of our industry is something like uh, you know creating comics or creating illustrations for magazines you know these are things that really excite you and they look very pretty so that is something that uh, you start out with you feel that you really want to do this and uh, you know it's something that you find really cool but uh, i think as i delved deeper into uh, what graphic design really is what design thinking is uh, i I felt that there were other things that I was more interested in like for me what I am most interested in right now is branding and uh, also retail design as well because uh, I think especially with branding it's it's it really comprises of so many different things like if you're doing something for a brand it's almost like building something from the scratch like what is what are the ethos of the brand it's not just a logo or it's not just you know an annual report you know it's 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 not just that there is there are a lot of associations that people make with brands and there is so much thinking that goes into really creating a brand so i think uh, definitely branding is something that i'm super interested in and uh, i think retail design especially uh, i'm is something that i'm really interested in because uh, when you think of a space uh, i think it's like a 360 degree view of the brand itself i think everything sort of comes together in that space you know whether it's uh, like a book that you've designed or you, there's a environment there's environment graphics that you have designed for that space so you know there are so many things that come together in that uh, retail space where you maybe you're trying to sell a product uh, that i think it's really interesting because the whole experience of it is in totality is you know the culmination of everything you've done at every touch point so i think retail and brand branding is something that i'm super interested in right now but uh, definitely starting out i was more into image making and um, illustration and maybe making my own comic some day but i think as i delved deeper as i said i sort of meandered into different things that really interested me interested me
Yeah. Right, because even in graphic design, your output could be like a very, like if you are doing the whole branding and if you make a logo for a brand, it looks like just a logo, but there's so much thought process behind it, so many case studies, so many other things are involved and they are not usually visible to the end customers, of course, not intended to be, but there is so much going on in every project. This, it's very interesting uh, and like there's a lot of study involved. It's interesting also that you said your final project for your masters was about the breaking the taboo of harassment or all. Could you just explain us a little bit more and also the, like a bit of thought process behind it? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, my final year project was uh, branding. So I basically uh, was working with Jasmine Patija who runs Blank Noise. It's a community that has been uh, sort of fighting, raising its voice against uh, street sexual harassment. And through the years, it has also sort of, uh, I mean, it's it's expanded to more than just uh, street sexual harassment. Uh, Jasmine was uh, a student at Srishti initially. And uh, I think, uh, you know, there are places around Srishti and around, I mean, everywhere where you uh, a lot of times encounter these people, hooligans who will, uh, you know, cat call and you know the everyday experience the everyday silent experience that women go through on the streets so this was a community that was combating that it was mobilizing people to fight against something like this and it was something that really um, that I really identified with it was uh, something that I really wanted to work for I really liked what Jasmine was doing so I decided that uh, I really wanted to base my final year project on uh, the work that she was doing. And uh, I decided that I wanted to create uh, a brand for uh, Blank Noise because Blank Noise didn't really have any kind of, I mean, to just put it very plainly right now, they didn't have uh, a logo or like the kind of presence or identity that uh, could really help it grow and probably get more volunteers and you know stuff like that you know really help it uh, grow a little bit more nationally as well as internationally so there were a lot of objectives uh, in terms of that uh, which i had to fulfill in order to increase the visibility of that brand so that was basically what my final year project was and uh, i basically gave them like three different identities uh, that uh, I basically it started out with a lot of research I took part in a lot of uh, these events that Blank Noise would uh, hold like Meet to Sleep or uh, Meet to Sleep is one of the events where you basically go into a public park and uh, you just put down you know a little bit of chatai and you just sleep on it you know you never see a woman just sleeping alone in a park you know it's something that is really uh, considered unsafe for women but I think we are sort of uh, claiming our space by doing this it's almost like sleeping as a political act so that was one of the things that I participated in and you know lots of these activities that Blank Noise does with women uh, women of every class uh, and I participated in those I did a lot of research I spoke to a lot of people who were already volunteers for Blank Noise and uh, that's how I really, you know, tried to understand what this was about. It also led into a lot of insight as to why these things happen and, you know, a lot of conversations around harassment in general. And it really, I think I really grew as a person when I did this project. So I think, yeah, I mean, in, in terms of that, it really, I really grew. I think my work as a graphic designer still since I was just in my last year. I, I mean, I had studied only for two years and uh, I would still say that the work I did at that point, uh, it's still a little raw now that I look at it. But I think in terms of research, I really um, gave everything to it and I was quite proud of uh, whatever I did for my final year project. So, yeah. Amazing work. Like, it's quite beautiful and very inspiring to see that how like one thing is designers and creative people have ability to also socially impact a lot of issues and they take their knowledge to do it because it's also easier for them to do it and when you do such projects in, in terms of education yes they are very educative you learn new things but they are also fulfilling at some level 
and I re- really liked your approach. I really liked the kind of project you took or the kind of work you did with these people. It's very interesting. Uh, and I just want to add one example here. It's not even directly re- related, but how you can take art and design to impact uh, some issue is like there was one experiment done where uh, they played I guess classical music in, in the metro station where there were a lot of rates of uh, theft and pickpocketing and they started playing classical music on the speakers and the rate dropped uh, by a very significant percentage and that was like it's ju- uh, I wanted to add that because Music is a completely pure art form, just like painting, drawing, or uh, maybe illustrating also at some point. But design enters when you use this art form for some cause, with some purpose, with some research, with some reasoning, and you apply it in some context to impact it. So it was also this another beautiful example of using music to solve some uh, social issue. So it's, it's very interesting also to understand the kind of projects you did. And then after finishing your master's, you went into the industry and you started working in industry. Uh, as you said, you first worked in a smaller firm and then you went into the bigger firm. So how do you look at the whole graphic design or branding industry in India? And are there any Indianized uh, approaches towards uh, the work also of course you must be having international clients as well but do you find yourself in a situation where you also have some Indian inputs towards it? Um, definitely uh, when we talk about the Indian uh, you know the Indian design industry what really makes the work we do Indian um, I think mainly we are designing for the Indian context whatever work that we've been doing we've been uh, designing for an Indian audience so everything that we do we look at it uh, through the filter of how an Indian audience would perceive it what is uh, you know what is more easily relatable to them and uh, you know basically these are the filters that we use what is relatable to them is this something that they have already seen or is this something that uh, you know is quite well entrenched into the uh, you know visual semiotics of you know Indian people so I think we definitely look at semiotics in that sense as to what is really Indian for example if we are um, designing for an alcohol brand and we uh, for example it's a vodka brand and we really wanted to look Russian for example so how do Indians really look I mean how do Indians really perceive Russia what is Russian to Indians is something that we really look at. You know, you cannot look at it in isolation. You can't look at it as just uh, vodka that's coming from Russia or just because vodka comes from Russia, you cannot have all just those cues maybe on the packaging of the bottle. Maybe you need to really look at what is Russian for Indians. What are the colors that Indians connect to Russia or what are the visual semiotics that Indians connect to Russia and maybe those need to be on the bottle for them to really look at it on the shelf and be like okay maybe this is really an authentic product that comes you know from Russia so it's I think it's uh, basically these little filters that you use I mean you're designing at you know for an international level but uh, you're really keeping those little filters in mind as to what the Indian audience and how the Indian audience really perceives a particular product. I think that is something that we really use to design everyday things. So yeah, I mean, that's how it is. That's how at least I look at the work that I do. So yeah. So I really like the example which you gave about like making a product uh, look like from somewhere else in the context where people are looking it looking at it from and it's very important to understand that context as context plays a very important role in any kind of projects so how would you suggest like the people who are coming out of university now or or the people who are just finishing the design how how they should navigate in this whole design industry what kind of uh, companies or projects they should take up or how how is it for them uh, when you're working in graphic design in India yes you I think I think that's an interesting question because uh, when I was getting out of college I I felt like I had a very uh, like I was very confident about what I really wanted to do and suddenly I think after uh, after maybe a year of being in the industry it keeps changing for everyone 
So I think definitely when you are out of college, you have some idea as to what you are good at, right? So I think you should definitely first seek out those opportunities, seek out what really works for you. Also, I would say that the kind of place that you pick to work at is super important because uh, it also depends on the temperament of the person who is you know going for these jobs for example if you are an extrovert you really like people then maybe you would love to be in the advertising agency if you're okay with long hours then you would probably great be great at, in the advertising agency and uh, if, if you're someone who really likes working with a lot of people maybe you know bigger firms is something that uh, would really invigorate you would creatively challenge you but if you are someone who will really likes to work alone, someone who is, you know, of uh, maybe you just like your own space and you prefer working with less people and you don't want to deal with too many hierarchies and, you know, things like that, then maybe probably a smaller firm is good for you, a boutique firm, which really uh, does specialized work and, you know, uh, wins all these awards. That's something, th those kind of things are something that you would uh, creatively find fulfilling. So I think the most important part is to really find your sweet spot in the industry. I actually spoke to a lot of people before giving my entrances itself in terms of uh, what it's like for an engineer to really get into the design industry and uh, a lot of people told me that uh, a lot of firms like having people with a diverse background because uh, then the way you think about things is pretty different from how designers who have just had design training you know think about uh, solving a particular problem so I think if you are from a different field I think that's probably a plus point I think that gives you a diverse view into things and the way you really solve problems is different from maybe someone who is from a completely purely from a design field so I think it's good if you have a diverse background Definitely, that's one point. Uh, secondly, as I mentioned, uh, make sure that the kind of place you are working at is suitable for your temperament. And uh, also, I would say that uh, really find something that you are good at and stick to it. Because even under graphic design, you have packaging design, you have retail design, you have environmental graphics, you have typography, you have publication design. You know, there are so many of these fields. and. Uh, you will probably deeply discover them as you start working in the industry when you handle actual real client work. So I think that definitely try out different things before you settle on to something and then you can just probably spend your entire life maybe just designing books if that is something that really uh, that's something that really drives you if that's your passion you know maybe you could just design covers for your entire life like chip kid and uh, that could really be the high highlight of your career you know so I think definitely these things like finding something that you're good at finding the right people to work with and uh, definitely being clear about what you really want in life I think yeah that's something that comes with experience but uh, uh, definitely try to be try to make every step about finally going more towards something that you eventually want to be doing so yeah that's probably what I'd like to say with my very little experience <laughs> but that's that's very valuable uh, because you have you have the experience of even if it's less but you have the experience of working in the industry so it's it's I think it's very important as you are talking about the place you want to be at what, what is your personal direction or what is the like not a destination but where do you want to go or what's your of course it changes but what's your idea of going forward wow that is a tough question i think uh, for me it's always been a moving target you know like what you really want to do i think for me definitely there are some creative goals which are one thing and there are also uh, career wise certain goals which are probably different from just creative things uh, for I'll, I'll, I'll give you an example like uh, maybe doing more personal work is something that I want to do. You know, maybe having that balance of doing client work as well as personal work is something that I'm striving to do uh, professionally in my career as well, you know, having that balance. And uh, professionally, obviously, I want to, uh, if you work in like a normal 
firm then you will probably your designation will change and you know you will obviously climb the corporate ladder if you do well enough but uh, i think for me what's important is uh, for me having women in leadership roles is something that's really important to me i have seen people uh, i've seen women in leadership roles and i've seen how much that inspires me so definitely for me uh i would also like to probably have one of those positions one day when i can affect other people or uh, have work that is that really has that much authority and uh, that much uh, weight that it can inspire other people and i think it's not just about the work it's also about creating culture within the industry where you support one another you really encourage good work better work you encourage collaboration within within the industry itself so i think definitely as i said uh, personally uh, that is something that i really want to strive towards i want to see more women in leadership roles i want to see myself in a leadership role i if i can say that so uh, that is something that i am striving towards uh, i think creating a good culture is something that i definitely feel very passionate about and uh, also trying to do work that is that really creates a difference that makes an impact that is i think it's difficult to say work that is timeless because it's i think it's a little difficult to create work that is timeless these days where everything is so fleeting and uh, you know one day it's something is in and the, the next day it's not so i think maybe if i create something timeless in this industry where everything is so you know uh, fleeting i think that would be quite an achievement so yeah these are all the things amazing i really like the the direction in the professional uh, sector you want to get at right it's a leadership position and impacting everybody so first of all i wish you all the success on that front and i i hope you will get there and you'll get to experience that kind of uh, position so yes thank uh, you that's there and other doubt which i had which is also coming from my personal thing because i'm i'm it's very difficult for me to separate between the professional as in the money earning work and the creative projects because i have so many projects going all around the all over the place so how do you keep yourself creatively fulfilled and how do you deal with that differentiation between those two streams so you mean monetarily uh, also balancing and uh, also creatively finding uh, work that drives you is that what you asked yes yeah, yeah somewhat because if if you say in the professional uh, world even if it's a creative field sometimes the task can be mundane because you are trying to cater to somebody else's needs and uh, it's more towards the client correct correct but then you also have personal projects so how do you like make a boundary between those things and then how do you keep yourself creatively rolling correct I think uh, uh, so you know that is something that uh, all designers struggle with initially quite a bit and I think we all have different ways of dealing with it for example there are people who uh, probably have jobs who work in the creative field but maybe are not doing things that are that creatively satisfying for them but it uh, pays their bills so they probably devise their schedules in such a way that maybe 9 to 5 they are doing this job and after that the time whatever they have they do that they do their own personal work and they find uh, you know creative satisfaction through that and uh, but, but then again there are some people who just uh, who just don't want to be working throughout the day you know so they probably only want to work at companies or places where they feel that the work is something that really suits them is very much in alignment with uh, their interests for example if i am someone who works who wants to work in the music industry music is something that i'm really passionate about then i can just go you know maybe be uh, you know these there are all these creators who make these visual graphics for music videos and you know uh, be an art director for these music videos so there are so many things that you can do so i think when it comes to also monetarily trying to balance these things i think it's really your call at the end of the day i think it's something that's uh, your personal call if you feel you know because we all come from such uh, different backgrounds and uh, for some of us you know given that design education itself is already so expensive and uh, you and me are actually quite privileged that we are able to receive this education and are being able to do something like this 
where every second to third person is an engineer or a doctor not that it's less expensive to do that but uh, you know it's it's still a new field and uh, i can understand if uh, some people are you know trying struggling to really figure out a way where they are also able to do creative things and uh, also trying to pay their bills so i think for me if you ask me personally then uh, i would say that uh, i probably look at jobs where i am also creatively satisfied but i am also able to pay my bills so that is just the way i uh, really look at uh, trying to balance these two things because uh, you know what happens if you ultimately look at it there is such little time that you get at home to do something uh, to do personal projects there is so much screen time uh, you're almost spending the entire day in front of the screen so for me i'm i'm just saying this personally it's very difficult for me to maybe uh pick up personal projects i'm also a little bit of a, a couch potato so for me it doesn't really work out so it's difficult for me to do personal projects although i should get on to a lot more of them and uh, but so this is why for me it works that i work in a company where i'm also creatively satisfied but it also is giving me the kind of monetary satisfaction that i need right now so i think that's how i look at it but uh, it can be different for different people if they have a good backing then maybe they can go for jobs where they are you know uh, creatively satisfied but maybe not uh, getting that much uh, remuneration at that point you know maybe work for a year at a place like that but uh, i think it's different it's a different journey for everyone and personally as i said i i'm already doing a job which is creatively and uh, also practically uh quite balanced for me and it's quite well suited for me so yeah that's how i do it right nice yeah of course like it will be different for different people but i yeah i, I liked your approach and i'll give give it a thought not like to take your approach but to also think about what are the challenges for me but thank you that that was really helpful uh so the next thing we would like to discuss on this podcast was Yeah so as we are going through this whole very historic situation of virus outbreak and everything and soon there will be times when it will hopefully start to reduce and then we'll try to come out of it so as a designer or as a designer working in agency what do you think is role of designers or role of creative people uh, to deal with this and also to help the clients or help the companies to come out of it as a better possibility so so you like firstly to just give you an overview of what is really happening in the industry i mean uh what i feel or what i'm reading these days accordingly um what's really happening is since there is obviously uh there are not many sales that are happening the whole country is on lockdown so obviously companies are suffering so usually what happens in these uh situations is uh, the first thing or the first investment that a company really cuts out is all the creative stuff that they do so you know whether it is marketing or really pushing a product forward through uh, any kind of campaigns and stuff like that that is something that is the first thing that a company really cuts down on i mean it's trying to keep functioning at a very difficult time so i think the basic functioning of it is something that it tries to retain at this point and uh you know they're not really trying to invest a lot in creative services right now the industry but uh, also uh, what i'm really uh, observing now is at least through the work that i am doing is that a lot of companies are also looking at this uh, current situation as an opportunity to really do better to really show their customers uh, that they can thrive even in such times so i can see that uh, they are trying to create campaigns where which are more uh, rooted in the kind of environment that we are in right now for example if uh, uh, you know there there's going to be a lot of change in the kind of messaging that you see the kind of advertising kind of designs that you see uh, outside when probably the lockdown is over for example you know you look at a mcdonalds or a burger king you know hospitality these retail sectors if you look at these uh, fast food chains maybe the kind of messaging that they will have will not be about uh, just yummy food or delicious food it will probably be about sanitization and the hygiene of the place because 
I think to get the kind of footfall that they were getting previously, they would really have to stress on how clean the environment is probably in their kitchens and how much care they are taking into really making sure that the food that you're eating is safe for consumption and you know all these kind of things i think the messaging has to change so which is why they're actually approaching a lot of creative agencies to maybe tweak the way they are talking to their customers so the kind of projects that we are also getting right now are more about uh, you know what are these proactive measures that we can take we are really looking at design as a tool to revive the industry to really revive uh, you know their companies and you know how design can really help them uh, you know still stay relevant even in difficult times like these so i think definitely i think i'm really glad to see that this kind of uh, change is really happening that design is really getting that kind of importance you know the strategic thinking that's going into really creating these brands making them relevant for uh, you know life after covid you know what are these things that can do what are the campaigns what are the you know so many things can be done which are more rooted in the kind of problems that we are facing right now so it's great that uh, you know we also as uh, the company that i'm working with we are also pro proactively looking at giving ideas to these clients and uh, helping them really recover well and get their return of investment after you know after maybe the lockdown is over so yeah i think i'm happy that we are using design as a tool to counter these difficult times right because as you said earlier that when there are heavy budget cuts the first things to drop are the creative projects or the design projects and then they go into really what works and what doesn't work and downshifting downsizing and all those things but at the same time you said there is a huge opportunity of work because the things will change the messaging will change the tone of voice will change so in this uh, are the brands or the companies are aware of it and are coming to agencies or also agencies like you are preparing such pitch or such presentations for companies to understand that yes this is a requirement and you should probably do it right now or take this design strategy basically uh, i think it's both ways companies are also coming to us uh, looking for solutions looking for ways in which people can be brought back to you know maybe these retail spaces and uh, how can they really uh, tailor the experience of their brand according to what's really happening right now so uh, i think it's definitely also we are pitching as a company as a, we are also having these brainstorms amongst ourselves uh, trying to figure out with the existing brands that we work for what are the new different kinds of interventions that we can do for them uh, that would really help them to survive this very difficult time uh, and i think like an example uh, that i can give you is that you know dominos dominos is also delivering uh, groceries right now i think in certain places you know i think it was in delhi uh, that they are actually doing this i don't know i think they have also started in bombay but uh, dominos uh, which is obviously a very loved uh, pizza retail chain they are also uh, you know delivering groceries at this time they have partnered up with uh, i think uh, another company and they are also delivering these groceries because that is something that is really the need of the hour so i think these are really these creative solutions this is how maybe a brand can really be relevant for people and uh, really show people that uh, we care about you and uh, be just more relatable to them be more helpful to them give them a reason to maybe order a pizza but also get you know their uh, really important groceries that they really need for their everyday you know cooking and all those kind of things so i think that's that was a really interesting move by dominos when they started delivering groceries as well so we are also looking at these kind of solutions like what can really uh, I mean this is just one example where there is a collaboration between two brands that's happening but uh, even in terms of a campaign for example like if i uh, give you an example like uh, when you when you think about coke for example which is like a really loved brand how can the messaging of this brand change to something that is more relevant for for today's times like uh, their slogan is open happiness so how can that really connect to something that we are going through right now maybe it's about sharing 
a coke with someone you are stuck with in a, in the lockdown you know maybe you are stuck with your spouse and you are just sharing a coke with them and that's your moment of happiness so maybe the messaging can be that way you know so every campaign that we are running could have imagery like that where people are looking out of the window maybe feeling you know a little bad that they are stuck inside their homes but they just break open a coke from their fridge and suddenly they are you know revived they just feel happy that at least they have you know a small bottle of coke to really keep them you know nice and happy so it's like so you know how this messaging really changes around a certain product because it has to be contextual so if this is what people are going through right now then i have to create a campaign in such a way that people easily identify with the situation that i'm showing in that particular campaign so this is how i feel the messaging would change these are things that we are pitching for and also companies are coming to us and asking us to find solutions for it's nice both the examples which you gave the first one of the dominoes was interesting because it's like repurposing or using your existing infrastructure for a different purpose or for a different use and helping people which is also interesting and the second example which you gave with coke was yeah it boils down to that no you you're not selling product you're selling an experience so you are like triggering emotions so it's it's beautiful if you highlight that yes we are giving you this happiness and best way to highlight is is through the communication and there your role comes into picture so it's yeah it's very interesting now i i did not like i now i can think about many examples but i was not looking at it in that perspective before so there yeah, the world looks hopeful because people like you and agencies like you have a bigger task to make it look hopeful uh and yeah i, I wish you the best luck and good luck with that as it's, it's also creatively fun to do such projects so usually towards the end of the podcast we ask our guests to recommend stuff like books or documentaries or videos or even music like songs and tracks albums anything uh usually on the topic you are working on but you can also take the creative liberty to tell us more if you want to oh wow um so i am actually quite uh, i i watch a lot of films so i i almost watch a film every day sometimes too so and i'm very much interested in, interested in music as well but uh, if you really ask me what i'd like to recommend is um, i think since uh, i've spoken a lot about uh, you know being a woman leader and you know working for this uh, project about street sexual harassment i think you can sense that i'm quite a feminist so i'd probably recommend uh, this movie called the punk singer um which is about this punk singer called Kathleen Hanna who founded uh, the band uh, Bikini Kill which was uh, you know part of these whole riot girls uh, uh, you know movement that started so i would probably suggest everyone to watch uh, the punk singer Kathleen Hanna anything else any books or any comics i think uh, in terms of books i have quite diverse tastes so it's it's not exactly related to what i'm doing but i think if i want to bring it back to something that i'm doing there was this book that i had read when i was uh, when i had just started working i think it was called uh, uh, how to be a graphic designer and not lose your soul i think it's a very popular book i think people know about this it's by alfred uh, sorry it's it's by adrian shonessy and uh, it's a great book there are some great tips in this book which i have personally used and they have worked so i actually quite uh, swear by this book and i think uh, it's a lovely book that everyone should read so definitely read how to be a graphic designer and not to, and not lose your soul by adrian shonessy and uh, yeah that's 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 it perfect and where where all can we follow you or see your work or get in touch if if anybody wants to ask something could also be linkedin instagram uh definitely you can follow me on instagram just look i think my handle is called artopus a r t o p u s uh my full name is vrishali somavanshi so just search for me and uh, you'll get my instagram handle i'm also on behance if you want to have a look at the kind of work that i do um and yeah just hit me up if you ever want to have a chat or uh, any kind of collaboration perfect i will put all the links down below so it's easier for you guys to reach out to her uh that being said we have almost covered everything talked about everything and that's sadly the end of the podcast so thank you so much everyone 
for uh, watching our beautiful faces if you're watching it on YouTube or listening to us if you're listening on Spotify or Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, anywhere means super a lot to us if you stay till the end because there's so much content out there so it's it's reasonable that if you don't watch it till the end but if you're watching it that that means you stay till the end so I'm very thank you for that uh, and yeah of course we have to thank Rushali for being here to for giving us the time and all the beautiful and amazing valuable discussion. Thank you so much Vishali uh, for for this lovely conversation. Thank you for having me Suyog. This was uh, absolutely delightful. Thank you so much. And with that, that's all guys. I'll catch you in the next video or a podcast. Till that time, don't forget to have fun. And yeah, stay safe basically. Super. Bye. Ciao. Bye. <laughs> bye bye. podcast.